بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد رسول الله I begin with the name of Allah all praise belongs to Allah and may peace and blessings be upon the prophet Muhammad for he is the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم الحمد لله جاء عمر جاء عمر very simple sentence this is a fa'il this is the fa'il how do we know that well this is a verb. We know that because it's a very common verb, but also because there's no tamarbuto, there's no tanween, there is no alif lam. This has no signs of a noun. It's certainly not a particle. It has to be a verb. And this is a noun. And how do we know that? There's no tamarbuto, there's no tanween, there's no alif lam. Well, we just have to recognize that Omar is a very common Arabic name. And we've seen this several times at this point. So what does this mean? Omar arrived. Very simple sentence. And one thing to call out, we said a few lessons ago that this is غَيْرُ munsarif. This is a partially inflected noun. Why? Because it's someone's name, Omar, and because it appears on the fu'al pattern. Again, this is a recap from a few lessons ago. When a noun is غَيْرُ munsarif, partially inflected, it does not accept tanween, it does not accept a kasra. Something to keep in mind for the duration of this lesson, inshallah. So, very simple sentence. Omar arrived. What about this? جَاءَ عُمَرُ المدرس. جاء عمر المدرس. What does this mean? Well, same structure. This is the fa'il, the verb. This is the fa'il. The action, the doer of that action. But now, we have an additional word here. المدرس. المدرس. What is the grammatical function of this word in the sentence? This is a new structure that we're going to learn about in this lesson, inshallah ta'ala. Well, first let's translate this. What does this mean? Ja'a Omar means Omar arrived. Very simple. Al Mudarris means the teacher. The teacher. So what's happening is we're adding this word here, this little phrase, the teacher, to the sentence. In other words, Omar the teacher arrived. Another way to write this, Omar, comma, the teacher, comma, arrived. We're still talking about Omar here when we say the teacher, but we're adding a little bit more information about him. That's the role of this word al-mudarris in this sentence here. Omar, the teacher, arrived. Omar is the teacher. We're just saying a little bit more information about him. Now I want you to notice, this noun here, this is in the nominative case. How do we know that? How do we know that this noun is in the nominative case? Well, it has a dhamma. That's a good sign of a noun in the nominative case. But this noun here is also in the nominative case. And how do we know that? Because of that dhamma as well. And it's clearly a noun because of the alif lam there. So we have two nouns in the nominative case within a jumla fi'aliya, a verbal sentence. We know in a verbal sentence, typically, there's only one noun in the nominative case, the fa'il. Now we have another noun that's in the, in the nominative case as well. It's very confusing. What's happening? This noun here is the substitute of this noun. What do we mean the substitute? In Arabic, this is called al-badal, substitution, substitution. Notice, you can say ja'a Omar, Omar arrived. You can also say ja'a al-mudarris, the teacher arrived. You're referring to the same person in both of these sentences. You can combine them and say ja'a Omar al-mudarris, Omar, the teacher arrived. Because this and this refer to the exact same person. 
It's as if this is a substitute for this. That is called badal, substitution. And because it's literally talking about the same person, they both take the same grammatical function, the same grammatical case in the sentence. It's like this is the fa'il. By the way, this is like fa'il part two. Although the sentence only has one fa'il, this is being substituted for it. And that is the function of al-badal, the substitution. And what you'll find is that this substitution, oftentimes, is just adding a little bit more description to that original first word. Omar arrived is a complete sentence. But when you say Omar, the teacher, arrived, you're just giving a little bit more description. And this word, it could be many things. For example, you can say al-mudarris. The teacher, Omar, the teacher, arrived. Let's put the Dhamma here. Or you can say, for example, Al-Mu'allim. Mu'allim. What does that mean? The instructor. So, Omar, the instructor, arrived. Or you can say, Al-Mudarrib. Mudarrib. Mim, dal, ra, ba. This means the coach, the trainer, depending on the context. Omar, the trainer, arrived. Omar, the coach, arrived. You can say, for example, Al Murshid. Al Murshid. This means the advisor, the counselor. The one who guides. So Omar, the advisor, he arrived. So what we're doing is Omar is the person. We're just adding a bunch of descriptions here. But no matter what we add, this is really the sentence here. Omar arrived. We're just adding descriptions about him. Omar, the teacher. Omar, the instructor. Omar, the coach, arrived. This is interchangeable. Really, this is the crux of the sentence here. And that is the function of al-badal, substitution. It's just giving more information about the main word that we're substituting here, Omar. We can say, Asha'ir. This is a sheen. Ja'a Omar al-Sha'ir. Omar, the poet, arrived. We can keep going. We can say At-Tajr, the merchant. This is Ta, Alif, Jim, Ra. Ja'a Omar At-Tajr, Omar, the merchant, arrived. Again, we can put any description here, and it's essentially acting as a substitute for this word here. That is the function of Al-Badal. Or we can say very simply Al-Imam. Ja'a Omar al-Imam. Omar, the Imam, arrived. That is how this works. And again, I want to call your attention to the fact that this is in the Halat al-Rafa, nominative case. This is also in the Halat al-Rafa, nominative case. There's only one fa'il here in the sentence. We're just adding more information about that fa'il, essentially. And as we saw in the previous lesson, this doesn't just have to be a noun in the nominative case. We can say, Ja'a Omar al-Imam. This is, Omar the Imam arrived. Or we can say, Ra'aytu Omar al-Imam. Ra'aytu Omar al-Imam. I saw Omar the Imam. Same thing is happening here. This is really the sentence. I saw Omar. We're just adding an additional word for more description. I saw Omar, the Imam. And because it's just adding more information, Fatha, Fatha. They're both in the Nasab case, the associative case. So up here, this is Arrafa, specifically this word and this word. Here, this word and this word are both in the Nasab, the associative case. 
as indicated by the Fatha and the Fatha. At the bottom, Marartubi Omarol Imam. Marartubi Omarol Imam. Notice the B means that this noun is in what case? The genitive case. Halatul Jar. And this must be also in the genitive case. But there's something different here. Here there's a Dhamma, Dhamma. Here there's a Fatha, Fatha. Here, Fatha, Kasra. Why is there a Fatha there? I purposely mentioned it at the beginning of this lesson so that you don't forget it. This is Ghairul Munsarif. Partially inflected noun. And when you have a partially inflected noun, it does not accept Tanween, it does not accept Kasra. That's just something we have to remember in the Arabic language. Certain names like Aisha. This is partially inflected. Or Fatima. Or Othman. Or Omar. And so it's Bi Omara, not Bi Omari. No Kasra, just a Fatha. But this Al Imam is a regular noun, so it takes a Kasra. Something to note. But really, the most important thing here in this lesson is that both of these words are in the same case, and it's because the second word is the substitute. It is al-badal. It's not really its own word in terms of grammar. It's simply a substitute for this word. That is what's being done here. Omar the imam. And so it takes the same grammatical function as the word it's substituting. Now, between this lesson and the previous lesson, we talked about two things. One is the conjunction, al-ma'atuf, like when we said ja'a khalidun wa sa'id. This is following the same grammatical function as this. They're both in the same hala, the grammatical case. Notice, here in this lesson we talked about the substitution, al-badal. When we say ja'a umar al-mudarris, the teacher is the same grammatical function as Omar. Omar, the teacher, arrived. They both have the same grammatical function in the sentence. Both of these are called At-Tawabi'ah. At we can call this case followers because we're saying that this word is following the case of this word. This word is following the case of this word. And these are two examples of that, the conjunction and the substitution. But one thing I want you to remember about the substitution in particular is oftentimes that first word is a name. And then the second thing is a description. Omar. Omar who? The teacher. Omar, comma, the teacher, comma, arrived. That's a good way to think about the substitution, the badal. Alhamdulillah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ala ushabihi wa ala atba'ihi hatta yamal qiyamati wa salam tasliman kathira.